Hi everyone, in today's video I am showing you some sped up action of me working on three different art pieces and each of them are created in different mediums. So I thought I would tell you a little bit about each one and what I'm actually doing and hopefully you pick up some tips along the way or at least enjoy watching the process. So this first one is a continuation and the final installment in my series that I've been working on on this channel and it's basically an artwork that is inspired by the country that I'm visiting for my bullet journey adventure and this month if you didn't catch my video last week it has been exploring Italy. So normally I do ask you guys to help me choose the prompt word for this piece but I decided not to this time because one I wanted to get ahead I'm trying to get ahead in my video content so that I can have a little bit of a relaxing Christmas and the other reason was that I actually really loved my Italian adventure and there was something that I felt quite strongly about and I really wanted to work on a piece that explored the word fashion um, and there was another element that I really wanted to include um, in it which was the Venetian masks so because I was quite you know I really wanted to create this piece using that kind of vibe I thought I would just do it myself and see if you guys like it so getting started I'm showing you how I sketch out the piece first now when I was thinking of what I would illustrate for this piece I automatically thought of fashion through the research because it's just such a huge thing that I'm pretty sure we all think of when we think of Italy and its creations. You just can't help but go straight to the huge designer names. So I thought because it is known as in such a fashion place, it would be ideal for my girl, who I usually include in these pieces, um, to be a bit of a fashionista. Um, so I do only like to do um, the sort of top torso on these pieces mainly so I knew I wanted her face to have the Venetian mask but I knew I wanted it to be quite obvious that she's a very you know fashionable girl and not just in a normal outfit ready to go on a little wine tour she's you know dressed in some very dramatic outfit so when I think of drama outfits I think of um, frills <laughs> and I kind of wanted to reflect that whole um, renaissance vibe as well like maybe she was posing for a portrait that she was having made or something like that so some sort of little nods to renaissance art you know, plus the Art Nouveau, plus the mask, you know, just kind of tie everything into this one piece. I do love to just mix and mash a whole bunch of stuff together to create something different. So once I was happy with her pose and getting the mask in there as well, I decided on her hairstyle, I threw some rollers in her hair. I really don't know why that makes me think of Italian vibes, but I figured she could be getting ready to go somewhere like to the mask ball and her hair is currently being curled. Uh, but it just felt quite vintage and I think it would just go with this painting more. So I went with it. And then I also added a lot of um, Venetian lace in the background which I think looks quite Art Nouveau styled as well so that was really fun to do with the brush pen especially um, so yeah I really liked trying to include a lot of little patterns and lace work into the background of this piece I've also included the lily which is the Italian um, national flower that's down the bottom there and then just some general pretty intricacies to make this whole piece come together and look more part of the series like my other drawings. Now I only recently discovered using the brush pen for my art. Um, I'd always used fine liners and just thickened up areas with the fine liner until I bought this brush pen and honestly I absolutely love doing the line art now. Before it used to take me a lot longer because I would color in these tiny sections of black in with like a 0.5 mil or 0.25 mil fine tip. And now that I've got the brush pen, it's like having a paintbrush and a fine liner in one. So I'm really, really enjoying it. And I just think that it gives the piece so much more depth because I'm able to mix up the strength of the line, like whether it's um, fine or thick. So if you haven't tried line art with a brush pen before, I definitely recommend it. One thing I do try to remember as I'm drawing with it is that I'll try and keep a fine line for most of it. And then whenever 
I'm drawing one side that maybe the light is not on. So wherever there would be a shadow, I tend to go thicker with my pen. Or if it's got a very dark color, like for example, in the hair, there's a dark shadow in there. Um, so I made sure to put a lot of thicker strokes around those areas to sort of show that the rolling effect of each of the hair chunks. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's how I work with the brush pen. Um, one also big tip that I've learned the hard way is always start at the top left of your drawing if you're right-handed. And if you were left-handed, you would be starting at the top right corner because as you come down, I find the brush pens take so much longer to dry. So I definitely, definitely am careful now not to smudge it as I go. And then if I'm adding any shading on these drawings, I like to use a technique called hatching. I've definitely talked about it lots in the past, but in case you're new to the channel, I'll just give you a quick overview of what hatching is. And it's basically where you illustrate shadows by um, using lines and those lines you'll vary the thickness and the proximity to each other so the closer they get or the thicker they are it's darker there and it gives you that effect of shadow and depth and then when they gradually space out and get thinner and more spaced out they tend to look a little bit less like a shadow and more like a highlight so I just like to add them around to add any shadows to the piece give it a little bit of dimension and then once my brush pen and all the liner layer is finished that's when I'll bring in some color now this piece along with all the other 11 pieces from this series are available to buy um, as a digital download which means you can print them at home or you can take them to your local printer and get printed um, as I'm based in Western Australia it's very difficult to ship items um, worldwide so I often just skip that part and make it as attainable to everyone everywhere so they are available on my shop I'll leave a link down in the description box if you're interested um, there's another th project that I do want to do now that this series is finished. Um, I won't be continuing this series next year in 2022. I've got other plans in mind and, um, you know, I just want to start mixing it up a little bit more. Um, so I do want to kind of finish this series off with like a creation of all 12 of these art pieces in one. So I am considering doing like a little um, zine or like, I did want to do a calendar. I really wanted to do a... Um, either a calendar for the year or a little journal or a perpetual calendar because that's something that I need for myself and I just find it so handy to have a birthday calendar that you can write all special events that are every year on it. Um, so I'm still looking at options of how to do that um, where I don't actually have to get them printed here and then ship internationally because it is just so costly getting them out there in the world and I really wanted to do it because I would just love to have that product for myself as well and have that option for you guys but it's just too expensive um, to get them shipped and you know I'm sure you won't be want wanting to pay that much to get it to you so I wanted to make them affordable as well. So my option is going through a print on demand service. So I am looking into that. Um, yeah, I hope you guys would be keen on something like that. Let me know if you are. Um, otherwise I will have to let this one go and let them be just on the shop as digital downloads. But anyway, so now we are finally at the coloring part. I always like to include just one feature color for these um, girls. And for some reason, when I think of fashion, I think of a rich berry, luscious color. So I decided to go with that. And I also had to include some gold because the Venetian masks um, have always got a lot of gold on them. And I thought the gold and the berry might look really nice and almost royal and um, yeah, just really rich and Italian to me. So here I am using my watercolors to illustrate that. I'm using watercolor and the berry color is a mixture of a few colors from my palette. And then the gold is from my Kuratake Ganzai Tambi Starry Gold Watercolor Palette. Mouthful and a half. <laughs> um, I love this watercolor and any chance I get to use it, I do because the metallic finish of these gold watercolors is just amazing. Um, if you do want any description of the tools that I use, they are all on my tools I use page on my website, which is linked down in the, in the description box.
And here is a final look at the piece. Now this commission here is a portrait of a baby. Um, so it's always a challenge when you're working with a baby because I find that their features aren't, you know, developed enough for you to make an accurate likeness. So, you know, a lot of them look similar in ways and I'm just so nervous that the baby actually won't look like the baby that I've been, you know, paid to create. Um, so there is always that fear in me whenever I start these kind of portraits. But so far things have been all right. I think it might just be one of those internal fears that maybe never go away. Um, it definitely happens with every commission piece that I do. There's always a sense of, oh gosh, what if they don't like my art? What if they don't like what I've done for them? You know, what if they've been picturing something else and I give them this, you know? So there is always that awful artist um, impression that goes on in our heads. I mean, I'm. Maybe not everyone does it, but I definitely do it, unfortunately. So um, that's always something that starts me off on these portraits. And usually by the time I get started on the coloring phase, it's dissipated. And as long as I've got the face down good and I feel like there's a likeness there, um, it goes much more smooth after that. Um, so yeah, here I am working on the face first. I'm using my Prismacolor pencils and this is what the only pencils that I use for doing portraits and stuff. Um, and I guess the end stuff means all my bullet journal stuff. Everything that I do with pencil is these pencils because I adore them. And I haven't seen a need to try any others because I can always achieve what I want to achieve with these. So they are looking rather sad, some of them. Um, the black, I definitely need to go and buy a new one like this week. Um, I love that you can buy these individually as well. Just a side note, and I'm getting way off topic here. Um, okay, so techniques. I have got videos showing how I create art pieces from scratch with my Prisma color pencils. I'm sure I have done that in the past. But if I haven't, is that something you would like to see? Let me know in the comments and I will try and do some more how-to videos. That's actually probably the plan for 2022. I think I'll do a little bit more how-to stuff um, if you're interested and keen to learn some more techniques, I guess. Um, but yeah, the way I work tends to be from section by section and I'll try to start with the lightest color and then work my way up because you do want to build these pencils in layers so for example with the skin color i if it's a light skin like this baby has i would start with a um, white layer in the highlighted areas and then do a layer of the light peach across it all and then wherever there's some more um, shadows, I'll start to add in some peach on that next layer and then add some of the French gray and just kind of keep adding and layering different colors on top of each other and then blend it together with each layer. So the more you press, um, the, the harder you press, you're going to flatten the tooth of the paper. So you kind of want to avoid doing that as much as you can until you're on maybe the final layer of that color and then it's that the tooth is fine to be flattened then i guess um but yeah i can go into more detail in a later video if you are looking for that kind of thing so if anyone is interested this piece here probably took me around five maybe six hours work um it's just a long process when you're working with colored pencils because each little tiny portion you can't get much coverage um my hand does hurt after a while uh, but it's such a rewarding thing i really enjoy working on um, people's pieces after i've got over the initial like oh gosh what if they hate it kind of stage then i really enjoy it um so this this little baby was a cute one to work on i liked the photo choices that the my client had like sent me 
they actually had the shot that they wanted um, was of this baby and he wasn't smiling in it but they do want to have a smiling shot of their baby so they sent me other pictures of him and I was able to put his smile on his not so smiley shot in the nice little uh, cookie monster suit and um, yeah that really helps to create the right piece. So I guess that's one of the benefits of having a portrait done by an artist. Um, you may have not caught the moment quite perfectly and you just want to combine the two. I mean sure you could do it with Photoshop I guess um, and that would be the, the maybe the same but you know everyone appreciates things differently and I love that people still appreciate the hand-drawn illustrations because that is what I do. <laughs> and here is the final piece. I'm putting it into a frame and taking it off to the client. And now this last piece here that I'm going to show you how I work with is my graphite illustrations. So these I offer as well for commissions and they're ideal if your photo isn't in colour because I do need a colour reference to work from if I'm going to be doing colour. Obviously if I'm doing black and white it can be colour or black and white. Um, so this particular image was in colour but um, my client wanted to have it just in graphite which I love because I this is my first passion, graphite drawing, just um, plain and simple. And I still really, I don't get to do it a lot now. So I really, really enjoyed working on this piece. And it was of a beautiful horse. And um, this girl actually lost the horse recently. And so her friend bought her this portrait of her with her race horse, which I thought was, yeah, just so beautiful to have. And I'm so happy that I can provide something that would give someone so much um, love and remind them of a special connection that they had. So yes, very warm and fuzzy about this piece. Um, the pencil that I'm using is, actually I'm using a few different pencils. So when I work with graphite, I'll always start with um, just a st standard 2B, um, sometimes a HB. It just depends on how many levels of darkness that I want in the piece. So generally it's a 2B. And then I will use a Tortillon, um, which is a blending stump to smooth out my lines. I, for some reason, have always loved smooth blending and it's so hard to get me to change. Like I often love the way people draw um, very loosely and have not a lot of blending and maybe just do some cross hatching and stuff. And sometimes I like to do that in my sketching, but if I'm creating a final piece, it's more than likely going to be as smooth as I can get it. So I like to use the blending stump for that reason. It blends out the graphite on, into, onto the paper beautifully. And then I can build layers with either using the blending stump again or using another layer of pencil on top. So yeah, this, this piece here is layer upon layer of 2B, then 4B, then 8B, and then also a black Prismacolor pencil. So it's a little bit of a series. And once again, it's working in those layers but I just love seeing the effect happen where you can build this depth into your drawings from just using shades of gray. Very, very fun stuff to me. Apologies that I missed the footage of the head being done. Um, I hadn't actually planned on filming this. And then as I finished the head, I thought, oh, I should really be filming this because it's, you know, it might be interesting to add into a video. So I'm glad I did because I've, you know, managed to pull this video together and hope it helps anybody who's looking for how to work with these mediums. Um, another tip for me to give maybe when drawing um, with graphite is definitely have a piece of paper or a piece of clear paper. Sometimes I use acetate um, to put underneath your hand because as you draw, this stuff smudges like crazy. So I always have that paper there if I'm ever working on an area that I've already drawn, it can smudge quite easy. So once again, I always start at the top left and work my way across and down, a bit like a printer. Um, and then, yeah, then you avoid doing any nasty smudges on your work. I also use a couple of different tools to create highlights, which is my kneadable eraser. 
which I find very handy for either lightening the pre-sketch work or using to pull back some highlights out of the like the lighter kind of pencil and then when it gets to the darker pencil you'll need something a bit stronger I like to use a mechanical uh, eraser it's got a like a little fine nib on it and I use it to get highlights and bring highlights back in if I accidentally drew over them um, so and then the last tool on here that I'm using as well is the paintbrush and the paintbrush is just a big fluffy brush to dust away any of the eraser shavings that come off um, because I do have a tendency to wipe with my hand all the time it's like a constant like reaction it's like an automatic movement that just happens all through my bullet journal and you'll probably notice that now on my bullet journal videos I'm always wiping the page for some reason um, but yeah it's much better on these kind of graphite drawings especially when they're going to a client to use a paintbrush so that I can brush away those shavings and not leave any oils from my hands on the piece itself. I'll also mention here that I often use the Tortillon um, to create white shading if that makes sense. So on these white gloves that she was wearing there was barely any darkness at all so instead of using a sharp pencil or a, even a light pencil I actually just used the excess lead that was on the blending stump to create some shadows so that's some tip that i can use maybe if you are shading something white to just use the excess on your tortillon and now i guess that sort of sums up this video i hope you enjoyed watching these three different um, styles and all the mediums that i've been using hopefully you picked up a tip if you needed one um, if not i hope you just enjoyed watching the process and listening to me chat um, thank you so much for watching i'll show you how this one turned out once it's framed and i hope you guys have a great week i will see you again next week and that will be my bullet journal flip through from the entire year of 2021 from country number one which was belgium in january through till Italy in December. I cannot wait to look back through the journal. It's always a fun video for me to create and I hope that you guys enjoy watching it and I hope you enjoyed today. And that is all. I will see you again very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.